Hello fantastic creatures, I'm Fantasims and today I'm going to show you how I made this base game only fully functional medieval loft bed and study in The Sims 4. So let's get cracking. Alright, so I haven't really played around with bunk beds since they came out because to be honest, um, the style of them don't really go with a fantasy build. I mean, I think you can incorporate them into like definitely the metal one goes with sci-fi and then this wooden one. I think you can kind of get away with it with certain fantasy builds, but I really wanted to transform it into something that I can reuse over and over and you guys can in your fantasy builds, even if tweaking it and maybe deleting some of the things and changing it. Um, but that started off by first covering it with these wood planks where the footprint doesn't interfere with anything. And because it's base game only, there's not a huge selection of objects that don't interfere with your Sims path. so. I had to settle with this wood plank which works really well, the color is pretty good, so I basically just in 90 degree angles use these planks to cover up the frame that already existed. So it was a bit tedious and you just have to keep tweaking it with the tool mod by fractions of degrees like elevating it by 0.01 or whatever to try and get it right at the perfect spot. But the great thing is because it's a very symmetrical object you can copy and paste parts of the build that you've already done and just transfer it to the other side like the ladders so I didn't have to create two separate ladders I just copied and pasted it on the other side and it worked perfectly and then I did the same thing for the headboard area it's slightly bigger than the frame for the ladders so I did have to tweak it a bit but it made it a lot easier and then I know that it seems a bit weird to have a brick bridge underneath the bed just like floating i mean it makes no sense why would you put a heavy brick object underneath a wooden bed but i was kind of thinking it would be cool if they just transformed something that already existed into a bed like maybe it was an old sewer in the castle or if, it, if it's a more Victorian style build, I could use it as like a tunnel that was converted into a loft bed or something. I don't know. I just thought that it gave it a really unique shape. And then I used the base game arched door as a template to then create some arches on the bed because I wanted it to really have that medieval um, gothic type of style to it and I really wanted to create some arches and if I'm honest with you when I was first doing this before I started to create the arches I was kind of getting bummed out at the beginning because I was like it just looks like the same bed covered in a different swatch of wood which is helpful because this means you can change the blanket covers um, the color of them and the frame won't change colors with it because it's covered in this wood swatch but I was just thinking it just doesn't look very unique I don't know how to shape the top of it but then when I started to create these arches I started to really like it and I'm basically just tilting them I think most of them were tilted by like I rotated them by um, 12 degrees and then some of them were 22.5 it was just you just eyeball it until it turns out the way you want it and again once I was done shaping that all I had to do was copy it and paste it to other areas so I did this sort of double arch and then it was it was just looking a bit flat so I came up with this idea to then rotate each of the planks by 22.5 degrees until you complete a circle so like 22.5 then it goes 45 I didn't have to I didn't have to write in the different degrees I just each time I duplicated the entire row and then rotated it by 22.5 did it again and again and again until it created that complete circle and then it just I don't know when I when I made the round shapes I started to really like it so then I wanted to add some of that round shape to the corners and I made these medieval spike looking things which is probably super dangerous to have on a loft bed because I am super clumsy and I know that I would definitely impale myself on this bed so it is not a safe bed to sleep in but it's still fun um, and that's why you can see all those crazy green axis lines and then this is cool because this is a base game fence post and it can't be rotated on its side but if you try to rotate it anywhere between 0 to 90 degrees you can't do 90 degrees else it goes invisible but 
it'll make it skinnier so you can come up with these thinner poles if you want to the only thing I noticed when I was play testing it is that they kept turning black when I put them indoors and I've used them indoors before and they never turned black before and then if I put a lamp by them they lit up and they were okay but then in certain spots of the room they turned black so I don't know whether it's a glitch or whatever so you might end up having to delete them if you use them in a room if, if yours are turning black as well which I apologize for but at least those would be behind it so it's not going to look terrible if you do delete those pieces and then I went on to create this nook area and the the tricky thing with this build was mainly that I had to keep play testing it between recording so that I could test out had I put the objects too far there's like this one square tile kind of where the sim is standing right now that square tile what, what she's on and behind her um, you can't place anything there but everywhere else underneath the bed you can kind of get away with so I was constantly play testing it to see how far I could push putting objects underneath the bed and it would still work and thankfully I was able to create this little nook and I thought it would be a neat like treasury area where they keep their coins and their gold and everything right next to them and then for the top I really didn't know how to finish it because I couldn't use any other objects like I couldn't use a size down vase or something to make these ornate toppers for the posts because all of the objects would interfere with a sim being able to climb into the bed so then I thought well maybe I can just reuse the arches that I've already done make them a bit skinnier and place them over sort of like a canopy and it does actually fit a short wall height although I think the very tips of the arches will probably go up into the ceiling I don't know if they'll poke through the floor above so you might have to delete maybe the very top parts but for a tall wall and a medium wall height it fits perfectly and then because the bridge is the underneath part of the bridge is in not invisible but see-through I put little planks there to kind of hide that area so it kind of looks like the bricks are just floating in the air which doesn't quite make sense but it's, it's the Sims, we'll just ignore that. And then I created a custom desk using the planks and let me tell you the flickering on this was insane because I put so many planks on top of each other so they were clipping. So then off camera I actually selected every other one with the tool mod and slightly sized them down to avoid all the flickering. I didn't show that because I didn't want this object video to end up being just as long as a huge speed build video. Um, and then I put them in slightly different directions to kind of to get a feel of the grains of wood like it's flowing and I really like how it turned out. In any areas that looked a bit bulky it didn't really matter because I was going to cover it with objects anyway and then I elevated it up using the desk as a template as a guide and then later on I shrunk down the desk because you can shrink down the desk to invisible I did it by I, shr I resized it by 0.001 one and it makes it completely invisible but I didn't do that at first because I wanted to be a hundred percent sure that it was in the right position so that if I had to change it later I could um, but if you make them invisible they still work and I did the same thing later on for the chair so that I could come up with my own custom design and then to hide the computer because you can also size down the computer and the sim will still be able to use it which is really cool I used the hands holding up a book in place of where the computer screen would be and as you can see I've got all of these objects all over the lot and what I've done is I have a bunch of lots saved in my gallery that I use where because it takes hours sometimes to search through the entire gallery and the debug gallery to find all of the objects that you want and so I actually have these lots saved like base game medieval fantasy stuff I have another one that's just every single pack medieval fantasy stuff and it's great because if I see all the objects in front of me I have a better sense of of the kinds of objects I can use so like if I'm having a moment where I'm like oh I need something to put here but I don't know what to use I can just kind of visually look around and see oh that object might work but if I hadn't put it on the lot I wouldn't think to use it so it's really helpful and so I used the artist sketches uh, the back of them to create this uh, layer of paper on the desk because that part of the desk 
you cannot put objects in that area because it interferes with the loft bed. So I was trying to find objects that could make it feel cluttered without having a footprint. And so I um, rotated postcards because on the I didn't realize this until I made this, but on the backs of the postcards, debug postcards, there's actually writing on it and some of them look really cool. Now they do have stamps on them, which obviously doesn't go with a medieval style, but we'll just ignore that. Um, so it just looks like there's a ton of paper everywhere and I used a bunch of objects to make it kind of feel magical like it's a, like also a potions study as well um, so I later on make some potion bottles that you'll see in a second but before that I decided to elevate everything and I used that little uh, artist dresser to tie into the desk so that it has its own set of drawers and it has these little cups of paintbrushes which look really cool as clutter items so they're poking through the top of the desk but you don't really know that they're part of the actual cabinet underneath so I like to look at objects and see is there a part of the object I really want to use and how can I hide the rest of that object or incorporate it into the build and that's kind of what I did here and then I wanted to create some shelving at the edge just just to have something visually interesting to look at and I just sized down a ton of debug objects and bottles and I put a little towel on the back I just wanted every area to have some decoration and then I decided to make a custom chair now I built it and then it wasn't working for some reason and I've used that stone pot thing it's a I think it's in the live edit object menu and it's never interfered with footprints before so I was getting really confused as to why it was and really all I had to do was pull it back by a fraction and so I later did that and it worked perfectly but I wanted to create a chair that tied into the rest of the bed because I looked through all of the chair options and the wood swatches just didn't go and so I wanted to create my own medieval style chair and I just basically did the same thing I did for the bed frame I, I just made a skinnier arch this time and I had those spikes sticking up and so it was uh, I think I rotated each one by like five to ten degrees so they just slightly tilt inwards and it's just a matter of tweaking it it's I mean it does look very complicated and complex I think what makes using tool mod to make these intricate things so challenging is just the constant tweaking like you do have to have a lot of patience and I've never thought of myself as having a lot of patience but I guess when I think about it yeah sometimes it takes like two hours just to do like a chair actually I don't think the chair took me that long but, but like sometimes it just takes that long and I don't realize that it has um, so it is a bit tedious but I think the end result is fun because you can I can always use these arches for something else the only thing I would say though is that with these wood pieces because they're so small and because I rotated them by 22.5 to make that rounded shape it's a lot of objects so I was at first thinking "Ooh, I could actually use this as like a window frame to create medieval windows that we could use in our builds but I noticed when I, I actually deleted some things because I had created some other archway designs on the bed and it was starting to make it lag a little bit and I've noticed that it's not so much how many objects are on the lot I mean too many objects do cause a lot of lag but it's how many objects are on the same spot I've noticed that is really what can cause a game to lag so if you put too many objects on the same location it just it, I think it's a lot for the game to process so I ended up deleting that and I realized it probably wouldn't work well as architectural details which is a bit of a shame because I really like how those wooden arches turned out but that's okay and then I went over to make these sort of potions flasks and I've said this before but I learned this trick from Sadie Sim she made these I can't remember what I think it's a World of Warcraft build that she did and she made these flasks of potions using the debug colored liquid cups from base game and I really love that trick so I did it here and I want to totally give her credit so that you don't think I came up with the idea um, and I just used the barrels on the side as kind of holders the wood swatch doesn't really go but I didn't want to have to recreate something out of those wood pieces especially if it would require using a lot of wood pieces because I was trying to at this point not add too many more objects to this uh, little build 
and then I love these flower sacks from the debug menu and I didn't realize that upside down it has this really cool texture on it it's like a dark color and it's got this um, woven look to it and I'm definitely going to use that in like a tent or another object build but I completely forgot it escaped my mind that having all of those objects underneath would block the path so I ended up having to move them and there you just saw a little animation of those little potions flasks and then here we are testing out the build I mean I'd already tested it out but now you can see it in action and I'm showing it outside instead of indoors because I was lazy and I didn't want to set up a room to look medieval so I was just like ah we'll just do we'll just film this part of it outside so you can get a sense but I think it looks nice with the sunset glowing on it because you guys know the lighting in The Sims isn't always the best and I do actually have a couple of lighting mods because I can't use reshade because I'm using a Mac. Everything looks so good with reshade. Um, so I'm using a couple of lighting mods. I can't remember what they are so I'll look it up and I will put it in the description below. And I'm also using a camera mod that allows you to zoom in a bit further. So I'll put that in the link below as well if you want to use it in your when you're building because it's so helpful when you're using tool and you can zoom in a lot further than the game normally normally allows you to but anyway I'm waffling on this is the finished result I hope you really like it I hope that this will help spruce up your fantasy medieval builds if you like this video be sure to give it an encouraging thumbs up subscribe and hit the bell to be notified about fresh content you guys know I freaking love you have an incredible day